Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful to you tonight. Thank you for how you have led us throughout the day. Thank you for several inputs that you have brought into our lives through your servants. And this evening now, O oh God, as we draw this last exposition, we ask that you send us help. We ask that our eyes of understanding will be opened and that your word will come to us with clarity, with simplicity, and it will come with grace. Let it mix with faith in our hearts. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'd like to thank the Lord for this moment again for us to go ahead. And I'd like to praise the Lord for bringing our brother and his wife, the evangelist Bamiloye. Thank you very much for being here. The Lord will continue to bless you. We appreciate what the Lord was doing and has been doing with you. And it has gone all over the world. May the Lord renew your strength and continue to perfect what he has laid on you to do worldwide in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Uh, this night, we are coming to the last segment of our exposition. And we have gone through John chapter 4. We have looked at John chapter 9. What remains for us is to look at John chapter 11. And John chapter 11 uh, gives to us uh, the story of Lazarus, of Martha, of Mary, and even of the disciples. And the entire chapter will have been something for us to spend time to study as much as we could. But again, because we are walking in the scriptures in order to highlight few issues, work while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. And so we are going to look at Jesus again responding unto walking in the day. Maximizing every day that he has. And what he has understood about not wasting time, not wasting space, not wasting opportunities. But this particular story John chapter 11 comes to us with another, another stroke. And what do we need as we pick these scriptures to study? My prayer is that God will undertake for us in the name of Jesus. Let's turn to John 11. <clears throat> and we will start reading from verse 1. We may not read all the 47, 48 verses that we have thought we are going to read. But we are going to pick as it becomes relevant. And we are going to tell the rest of the story. John chapter 11. I pick it from verse 1. Now a certain man was sick. Named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which was which anointed 
the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that he said, this sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of God and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, says he to his disciples, let us go again. Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. Goest thou there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbles, because there is no light in him. This thing said he, and after that he says unto them, Our friend Lazarus, Sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly. Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. I think I should stop there first. Eh? Let's stop there first before we come again. Praise the Lord. Now we are looking again at a very important passage. You know why it looks important to me? John who wrote the book of John, at the end of the book of John, chapter 20, he had said, there are many things that Jesus did, many miracles, many great works, that if we were to record everything, all the books of the world will not be able to contain them. So somehow I have a feeling that there was not sufficient space to contain everything that Jesus did. But why there is not sufficient space, I am surprised that one particular miracle could be allowed to take about 44 verses. If there was no space to take so many, 
Why did they give so much space to this one singular miracle? When I come to look at scripture like that, it makes me to sit down. There must be something serious here. There must be something compelling. There must be something that as if, if we get to know about this, all other things that we would have loved to know will have been contained in this passage. So, having dedicated so long verses to one scripture, to one story, to one miracle, it means there are many, many issues that the master will want us to look at and emphasize and draw for our journey as the Lord will lead us. That is the attitude that I want you to look at now as we take the story of how Jesus was coming to raise Lazarus from the dead. I want you to know that there are others that Jesus raised them from the dead. It was just mentioned in one Bible verse. Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. There was no big deal about it. And said, Jesus just went there and said, Talita kumi, and the woman rose. There was the son of the widow of Nain that Jesus raised just by touching, just by touching the, by touching the, the bear or the coffin. And immediately, the boy rose up. And there was nothing more about that. But why was the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead? Why did it take so much? Why does God want to emphasize it critically for us? That's the attitude at which I want you to now follow me as we do the exposition of this passage this night. Now, a certain man was sick and his name was Lazarus and he's from the village or the city called Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. That elaborate introduction of where they come from, their relationship is very interesting to me, but I will not want to wait at that point yet. And for you to know, the Holy Spirit still fell like saying, which, which Mary are you talking about? They said it was that particular Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Again, as if to build and say, this particular Mary, this is not the first time we are going to meet her. This particular Mary had poured a precious ointment on the Lord Jesus before. And she had learned how to sit at the feet of the Savior. And you know when they said she anointed the feet of the Lord with ointment and why these feet with her hair. I don't know how to explain that. But the impression it gave me is that here was a woman who was giving her all to the Lord. She was giving a precious ointment to the Lord. And then she carried her hair. You know the hair of a woman is her glory. If you know how much women spend to make their air. If you know how long some time they spend to get their air properly fixed. Sometimes it is in several thousands. And some are still making their air for three, four days. It's not finished. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Now, but this woman did not think anything else 
was good enough to wipe the feet of the Savior. But our heir. And I was wondering how she would bring her heir to wipe the feet of the Savior. It means herself was on the floor. It means she was in an attitude of worship. It means this woman has given up all she is, all she has, all that defines her. She has laid it at the feet of the Savior. I want you to remember it was this same Mary that the Lord Jesus spoke about her. If you remember in Luke chapter 10, when Jesus visited their house, also in Bethany, and Martha was running up and down. Do you remember how Martha was busy? How she was distracted, combat with much serving. And the Bible said, Martha busted on Jesus and he said, Master, don't you care that this, my sister, has left me alone to serve alone? Command her to join me, Joe. And Jesus looked at her. Say, Martha, 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 how many times have I called you? And how many years do you have? Martha, you are combat and bothered and distracted about many things. But only one thing is needful. Only one thing is needful for you to succeed. Only one thing is needful for you to see the miracles. Only one thing is needful for you to serve God aright. Only one thing is needful for you to see the glory of God in your life. Only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen it. No one will take it away from her. Mata, where the discussion ended, I don't know what happened to Mata. She must have busted out again. Went back to what she was doing, very busy. And everywhere I have met Sister Mata, I have met her doing the same thing. She never changed. But I will not talk about Mata now. Because the matter of matter is not the matter tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. There's a bigger issue that we have to focus upon, particularly tonight. Now, his sisters, they sent unto him saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest, is sick. Look at that kind of sentiment. What is happening there? <laughs> All right. We better greet our senior pastor. Welcome, sir. God bless you. Thank you for releasing this place to us. We appreciate you. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Right. Now, the man whom thou lovest is sick. What do they mean by putting it like that? They were looking for a compelling reason for Jesus to rush down. They were looking for every sentiment for Jesus to change his agenda to come and attend to Lazarus. They were looking for something that may likely influence Jesus' decision 
on how to get quickly to Bethany in order for their brother to be healed. Now, I do not want to speak against that sentiment because it's all right. The man that Jesus loves is sick and all we needed was let him just come now, 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 now. But I know that there are other persons in the Bible that they had there are people sick, even almost unto death. And they said, Master, you don't need to come down. Just speak a word. Send a word. My servant shall be healed. Do you remember there's somebody like that? Do you remember there's another nobleman that came to see Jesus because his only daughter was also sick? And while Jesus was busy dealing with others, they brought a news to him and said, don't trouble him again. The young man is, is dead. And Jesus had the man say, well, they said, my, my daughter is dead. He said, okay, no, no, no. Your daughter is not dead. She only sleep. Your daughter will live. And the man rushed back only to find that his daughter had been healed. So again, I'd like to say to you that it would not have been needed, it would not have been necessary for the two sisters to be expecting Jesus to come to their house before Lazarus could be healed. In fact, when they told Jesus that Lazarus, whom you love, is sick, it was enough for Jesus just to send a word and say, Lazarus, you can't be sick. Stand up. Because there's no distance with the authority of the word of Jesus. His word is power. His word does not know any barrier. When God sends his word to your life, eternal things take place. You don't need to struggle. But that Jesus needed to go to that house and he needed to create time to get there is a different matter that I want to raise tonight. And I perceive that that possibly is a crucial matter for me and for you as we study the word of God. Now go ahead. The Bible said when Jesus had... When he heard that Lazarus, the man you love, is sick. He immediately said, this sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be what? Might be glorified thereby. What a great discernment. Jesus already knew that this sickness is not unto death. But that God wants to take maximum glory out of this situation. That's why it has happened. You know, in the morning I was telling you that Jesus saw a man that was born blind. And people are saying, is it because his father sinned or his mother sinned or himself sinned in the womb? And they'll say, it's neither parents or himself that sinned. It is only for the work of God to be what? to be made manifest in him. That was why. Again, we are seeing Jesus here. Responding to a matter from a perspective of correct heavenly discernment. This sickness is not unto death. But so that God might get maximum glory and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. There are things that God allows to happen in our lives. There are challenges that God allows to come your way. And you'll be wondering, why didn't God intervene just now? And God is saying, no. If I intervene now, it won't bring too much glory. It will look ordinary. It will appear as if 
is common. But if I want to get greater glory, if I want the purpose of God to be magnified, let me wait. And it will take a man who walks with God to understand that. To take a man whose heart is beating after God to understand what God is looking for in every issue. It's not just miracles. What does God want to achieve with each miracle? It's not just that something happened. What does God want to get from that happening? It's not just that we did something. How much of God's glory is involved? Those are questions that, that, that matters to men who want to please God in their lives. Now, to make sure there is no doubt as regards whether Jesus loved Martha, whether Jesus loved Sister Mary, and whether Jesus loved Lazarus. Verse 5, again confirmed. Can you see verse 5? Now, Jesus loved Martha, loved her sister, and loved Lazarus. Now, I wanted to mark a few things there. You see the word now in verse 1. Did you see the word now in verse 1? Eh? Did you see the word now in verse 5? Eh? So the question is, how could Jesus love Lazarus so much, love Martha so much, and love Sister Mary so much, and he allowed their brother to be sick. How could he so love him that when they told him that the man that you love is sick, he did not take the next flight. He did not rush down. Look at how the Bible describes it in verse 6. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick. Are you all following me? When Jesus had heard that Lazarus was sick. And it was an emergency. The Bible said, he did what? He abode still. Two days in the same place where he was. I don't know whether you are with me at all. Are you with me? Eh? If you were Lazarus and the sister said, We call for Jesus, he would deal with that matter now. He will soon be here. He will soon be here. And they said, because he loved Lazarus and he loved Sister Mary and Sister Martha, when he had heard that Brother Lazarus was sick and this sickness was so urgent that they had to send for him, he decided to abide again two more days where he was. Does that show the love of God? I need you to answer me. Does that show the Lord loves them? I was just wondering how Lazarus say, he said he loves me. And we sent for him. And he's still delaying. What was he doing? They said he just, he just decided to stay two more days. <laughs> Martha, you know Martha? She would have been panting up and down. I said, ah, Jesus. Eh? No. Mm -mm. Ah, did you tell him that it was me that sent you and that Lazarus, whom he loved, is sick and the sickness is serious? What did you say he was doing? They said he was still sitting where he was for two more days old. Hallelujah. When God wants to get maximum glory, 
When he wants to do something that will magnify his purpose in your life, he waits for the whole thing to ferment. And I can see some of you, you are listening to me. Because of a seeming delay, you concluded so quickly, Jesus doesn't love me. If he lost me, he would have cared. To you, the definition of Jesus' love is that he must run up and down when anything pinches you. And for so many, for that reason, they went away. They went back. He said, I don't know about this Jesus. If he cares, why is he waiting? Why is he delaying? I will do something for myself. I will just go and do something for myself now. And I have seen so many young sisters. How they quickly. So I pray, 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 pray. I thought that one brother will appear. And you know I've been praying, I've been praying. I've been praying. Jesus does not, I don't think he lost me. Let me do something. That's how you quickly went to say yes to one man from Babylon. When they ask you, sister, why couldn't you wait? I waited enough. And as I was checking, my time is going. That's why I decided. And you went to Babylon. What did you get? Sometimes his delay is not equal to denial. His delay is not a sign of lack of care. His delay to bring intervention to your life does not necessarily mean lack of interest. Is delay to quickly step into your case is not a sign of neglect. It might simply be a manifestation of his purpose to bring the best, to bring you into the best, and to bring the glory of God to bear on your life. But I'm just looking at what is happening in the house of Sister Mary and Martha and Lazarus. I can imagine that all the sympathizers that came, they were saying, Thor, what are we going to do now? Look, your brother is beginning to converse. And Martha said, me, I don't know. I've sent for this Jesus. He's not coming. I don't know why he's delaying. But I imagine Mary... Do you know what Mary would have said? Mary would have said, Though he tarries, still I will wait. God will finish what he has started. Something great is coming on my way. Mary would have said, If it is not for something glorious, I know Jesus will be here. And if he had not come, let's wait for him. Martha said to wait again, to wait again. Sister Mary said, let's wait. If we don't wait, where are we going? Lazarus said, if he didn't come, and I happen to sleep in death, and he comes, maybe I will see him in glory. Let's wait. Let's wait. Others were saying, if Jesus really loved this man, he should have been here now. Many times, unbelievers who do not know the way of our God, they have their own agenda. And they would like to say, if Jesus is real, if he really loves you, and if he has power, 
He should have done this now. He should have done this now. We can't understand all this delay. Rise up and do something. Take your own destiny by your hand and do something with it. All this waiting, waiting, waiting on God. I don't understand it all. And how many lives have been derailed just because they could not wait? Praise the Lord. Do you remember one man that finally missed out simply because he could not wait for the Lord? You remember Saul, the son of Kish, the first king of Israel? Do you remember? Do you remember that Samuel told him to wait? That he was coming. He should wait. And they waited. He waited the first day, two days, three days, four days, five days. Sixth day, by the seventh day, when the man of God said, I will arrive. He had not yet arrived. And brother Saul lifted his hand and said, what's all this kind of thing now? Then he looked around. Say, if I don't do something, these people will disappear from me now. Let me just do something about it. Let me do something. What did he do? He went and doubled into the office of a priest. What he was not supposed to do. He said, go and bring me, bring me animal. Let's just quickly do a sacrifice now so that we can move on. Uh, whether Samuel come or not, let's just go on because we need to move. How many times you have been so much in haste and you have destroyed what God meant to be a great glory in your life? How many times did you think that God's seeming delay is as if it's an abandonment? It's as if the Lord had forgotten you. It's as if the Lord has decided not to help your life. So you took the law into your hand. You took the situation by yourself. You said, let me just do it. Unfortunately, as soon as they finished doing it, Saul arrived. I mean, Samuel came. Samuel said, what have you done? God will have established your, your kingdom. But now you have done foolishly. Your kingdom will not continue. God has looked for a man after his own heart. Saul has not gone far. Haste, impatience, scattered his life. Now, Jesus stayed back two more days. When it looked like an emergency in the house of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, as far as Jesus was concerned, it was not yet an emergency. What God is about to do, if we rush there, we will not be able to achieve it. Praise the Lord. Are you with me with this story? Now, then after two days, the Lord Jesus took another decision. This even baffled the disciples. The Bible said, then after that, verse 7, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. This is the road to Bethany where Lazarus was. And they have come out of Judea because there was a kind of opposition, a kind of uh, persecution, a kind of rejection, a kind of witch hunting. After two days of staying here, instead of going straight to Brother Lazarus, Jesus said, let us go into Judea again. The ways of our father. Mysterious, isn't it? Beyond human understanding. 
But when God wants to show his greatest glory in a man's life, God takes his liberty to come at the right time to do what he wants to do in your life. Would you like to pray tonight and say, Father, don't let my sentiment, don't let my emotion, don't let my tears make you change your calendar for my life. Don't allow even my, my impatience, my temperament, don't let it make you change your plan for my life. Lord, take your time. You do everything beautiful when in its own time. Lord, I want to wait for your time. Is there somebody who would like to pray such a prayer here? Eh? You like to say, oh God, don't even let my tears make you rush to do anything. Don't even let my feelings, my emotion, don't let it mobilize you to do what you are not yet ready to do on my behalf me grace to wait. I know you will never come late. And whenever you come, you will do me well. Can your faith come to that point as to let God have his way in your life? When I'm ready to apply what I'm dealing with, you will see it all coming together. One of the issues is that many of us, we are not able to enter into the will of God into the purpose of God, into that which will give God the maximum glory in our lives because we have not yet overcome the hate spirit. We have dabbled into things earlier than when God wanted to walk. We have manipulated when God is not ready to move. We have run ahead when it was not yet his time. Sometimes you may know God has given you a vision. God may have shown you something. And the Holy Spirit said, wait. But I hear you say, no, I know the will of God. I know what he said I should do. I know I'm supposed to go there. And then you go. When Baba has not left. Of course, when you go there, the door has not opened. Because the time for God to open that door has not come. You hit your head against, against closed doors. And you wasted your energy. And it looked as if the will of God was not going to come to pass. No! There's nothing wrong with the will of God. There's something wrong with you. You went... Outside is time. You are tempted. What God has not called you to do yet. Praise the Lord. The issues I'm raising this night, you will grow into it. God will help you to understand it. That there is a time. God has ordained for everything that you will do in your lifetime. Am I communicating with you? There is a time when God will show up. Even if everything looks spoilt. Never worry. It is not spoilt. When God comes, everything will come to shape. It's better for God to come than for you to be the initiator of the matter. It's better for it to be God than for you to be using your common sense to calculate it's better to wait. Now, he went back to Judea again. Ah, ah. So when he said, let us go back to Judea again, even the disciples said, excuse me, are we going back there again? Is that not where they wanted to kill us? Why are we going back there? And that 
brings me to a very critical issue that I will lay before you tonight. Walk while it is day. For the night comes when no man can walk. I want you to see Jesus responding to divine timing. Responding doing the right thing at the right time for the right purpose in the right place. It is not about running up and down. It's not about struggling. It's about being at the right time at the right place doing the right thing. Your ministry will break forth when you are at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will not be wasted when you learn to walk according to Baba's time. You will not be derailed if it is the Lord that is leading you where you are supposed to be doing what you are supposed to do at the time you are supposed to do it. That's how God ordains that we should serve him. Praise the Lord. There are several things in our own lives that it baffles me why God will insist that I could not do certain things at the time I thought I should do it. And he says, no, that's not the time we have planned for it. Even though it appears as if you have energy for it, and as if you know everything about it, but there's something yet that ought to happen before this will take place. Wait. Though it tarries. So one of my favorite songs in those days, when I was learning how to wait, how to learn to walk in God's timing. Say, the Lord is good unto those that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. Therefore, it is good for a man to do what? To wait, to both hope and wait for the salvation of the Lord. When a man learns to wait for God, he will be walking into that which God has already completed in its time. Young men, I know I need to talk to you particularly because youthful exuberance many times comes with a hasty spirit. Many times, zeal used to make it look as if to wait for God's time is to waste time. No. No. Actually, you are wasting time when you go ahead of God. When you don't know to wait for the timing of God for your life or whatever he wants you to do, you have wasted yourself, you have wasted your energy, you have wasted your resources and you have wasted the time because the time that you are trying to use to do what it's not its time is for something else and you have wasted it. I saw Jesus, our Lord and Master, he learned how to work with God's timing. So look at that scripture. Jesus answered and said, are there not 12 hours in the day? What does that say to me? There are 12 hours. There's a time allocated when God will have you operate and do his will. And he said, if any man walk in the day, When it is your day and you walk in your day, 
everything will work well for you. You will never stumble. Praise the Lord. But when you see a man who is struggling to do something in his night, even the things he did before, he will scatter it. Has it happened to you before? Do you notice that if there is no light, instead of you for you to wait for light or to go and look for light, you say, let me just, let me just, there is no light, but I have to do something. Do you know what normally has happened? The things that you well arranged during the daytime, what did you do to it now when you are trying to navigate your way where there is no light? What did you do now? You scatter them. You know, I pray much prayer for myself. I say, Father, it's better for me to sleep when my night comes. I want to do all heaven has ordained me to do in my day. If a man does not do all he was ordained to do in his day, if at night he is not sleeping and he's trying to do something, he will have scattered even all that he did before. There were several men, men of God, that God was using very deliberately but they did not understand that God has set a day for their work. When their night began to fall and they have not gone to sleep yet, the things they started doing in their nights was the destruction of what they did before. There were several brothers whose only memory of them we now have is the first doctrine they now preach. But they did not start preaching first doctrine. They, they, they were correct. They were doing great work. But when the time came for God to say, brother, you've done well, come, come over. Instead of sleeping, they were awake doing night work. My brother, my sister, young men here, may you walk while it is day. May your day be sufficient for you to finish your assignment. May you sleep when the night comes. A walk will be great. Your walk will be wonderful as long as the day that God has opened over your life. When you walk in your day, you don't stumble. When you operate within the day that God has allotted to you, you will do well. When you understand your day, your day has broken. You walk in the day. You operate in the day. You maximize the gift and the grace of God in your life within your day. Then you will never stumble. Then you will do great things. Then you bring glory to God. But when the night comes, oh my God, may you not be awake in your night. The right thing to do when the night comes is to do what? Is to sleep with your fathers. Is to say now let your servant depart in peace. For the night has come where no man can do useful work. But if a man is struggling to do something when his day has passed, God will not allow you to do that in Jesus' name. All those who did, they spot their work. They destroyed what God started with them. They scattered it. In fact, they brought dents onto what God did. 
a beautiful work, a beautiful ministry became bastardized because the man is still hanging on when his night has arrived. But you know tonight is too short for me to begin to discuss how do I know my day? How do I know my night? How do I know what the day for? A walk has passed. <laughs> and brothers, let me tell you, again, even in God's walk, there are times that God has opened a day for a certain aspect of God's work to be done. When the day for that work has passed, if God had not finished with you and you are sensitive, it will move you into something else. Hallelujah. And others may be doing that thing because for you, the day to do it has finished. If you persist in it, you will only be using night. There were things that it is their day to do. And if a man is walking within the day that God has created for a certain work to be done, he will do well. But if a man begins to walk when the day for that work has passed and he has entered into the night, he will only scatter whatever he was doing. So what am I saying here tonight? I'm saying that even for your life, even for you to be useful, even for you to participate in the purpose of God for your life, there is a day. Maybe I should say it in a more simple way and it will be clearer to you. Should I try? When you go to Luke chapter 1, can someone go to Luke chapter 1 and you read the last verse, I think Luke 1 ended in verse 80. Can you try to check? You will see one strange statement that was put there. Are you there? And the child grew, verse 80, and was strong in spirit. And he was in the desert. Till when? Till when? Till the day of his showing to Israel. There's a day. God will give you understanding. You know, there are times that when the day of God showing a man comes, even if he just stand up and say, ah, 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 something will be happening. Praise the Lord. But when the day of his showing has not come and he tried to show himself, he has to pay so much for publicity. He has to do a lot. He will be talking about himself. He will say, but we don't know. You. We don't know. He will struggle. Nothing will happen to him. It's better to wait for our day. Will you wait for your day? Eh? And if the day opens on your life, will you walk while it is your day? You know, in the morning, and when we take the general theme of this meeting, walk while it is day. I am adding one little issue to it tonight. Walk while it is your day. Are we together? Walk when? Why it is your day. If you struggle to walk when your day has passed and you are in the night, you can only stumble. So Jesus said, 
Are you saying that I should not go back to Judea again? Say, while a man is in his day, he cannot stumble. And I, I want to assure you, when God has opened a day unto your life, nobody can stop it. Hallelujah. When God has opened a day for your life, for your ministry, are you hearing me? Nobody can stop it. Every opposition will only promote you. Every attack will only advance you. And why? It is your day. When it is your day, even the devil, whatever he does, he can only regret because it will only push you further. When it is your day, even if people join hands together and say, Brother Aguilé will not make it, there's no problem. When it is your day, who can stop you? Who can stop God from working with a man when his day of showing to Israel has come? I used to also just wait and praise God. When I meet God, I mean meet people, brothers, and I perceive that it is their day. I simply do only one thing. I thank God for them. I pray for them. I encourage them. I say, brother, you know it's your day now. Do as much as you can do. Get as much as God is giving you grace to do. God has opened a day. Anywhere you go, people will talk. Their hearts will open because it's your day. But may you finish while it is day. Amen. May you pray and say, Lord, I must finish while it is my day. When the night come, Father, let me be sleeping with my fathers. That's what I've prayed for myself over the years. It is not sickness that will kill you when your day is still there. You will live. You will not die. Eh? You will see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. But when night comes, my prayer is that you will have finished. So I want you to join me in prayer. Lord, before night comes, let me finish all that you have ordained me to do. Let me accomplish all that you have granted me this day to accomplish. Don't let there be anything left. And they say, this brother had the day to do it. Unfortunately, he was chasing mosquitoes. He was using the anointing eh, to kill cockroach. When we gave him an anointing to bring down giants. Now his day has passed. Can we look for someone else? May God not have to replace you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, all of this, because Jesus was working in his own day, he was operating according to the calendar set for him. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night... He stumbles because there is no light in him. These things Jesus said. And after that, he says unto his disciples, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. These are very mysterious things that Jesus does. I'm going to wake him now. He's sleeping. He never calls it anything else. Then the disciples say, well, you know the way they say, they say, well, if he's sleeping, it's okay. It means it will be all right. Jesus said, look, let me tell you, Lazarus, our friend, is what? He's dead. But you know, 
what touched me in that passage, and I want all of you to open it now. Please go back. John 11. Just one little issue before I press towards where we are going to conclude our discussions tonight. The Bible said, in verse 14, then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. This kind of passage say, I am glad for your sake that I was not there. You know when the sisters came, I'm fast forwarding the story now, when the sisters came, when Jesus finally arrived, four days after Brother Lazarus had died, they have already put him in the tomb. They have already wrapped him with the grave clothes. And the master arrived. So to say, four days behind time. What was the statement in the mouth of Martha? Said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You know the meaning of that? Sir, you came late. I don't know what you are coming for now. We called you when the matter is there. And what does it take you to have come? You are coming now. It's late. Sir, it's late. And Brother Lazarus, it's also late. <laughs> Did you understand? He said, you are late. And Lazarus is also late. So there's nothing again. A she. Jesus said, your brother will live again. He said, ah, we know. We know he will, he will rise in the resurrection of the dead. That's not what we are talking about. We say you came late. Now, what were they expecting? That if Jesus had come, maybe it was headache. Maybe it was fever. Maybe it was one of these uh, quick, 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 quick diseases. And Jesus would have done like he did to Peter's mother-in-law. And would have just put his hands and the man would rise. And that would not be any story. Will it be a story? No. He has done that before. Or if he came and he met the brother conversing, conversing, and said, you that spirit, get out! And the brother stretched out and he sits up. It's still a miracle. Is it not a miracle? Eh? It's still a miracle. That's the kind he did before. There will be no glory for that. People say, well, we thank God. When he came, he just spoke. And Lazarus became all right. He was not able to eat before he came, but he started eating. We thank God for that. That would have been all. But God was looking for something else. God needed to get the maximum glory out of Lazarus' life. Out of Lazarus' sickness. Out of Lazarus' situation. God wanted to get a maximum impact even on the life of the disciples. Even the disciples themselves, Jesus said, for your sake. As if this thing that I, I delay to come and do is for your sake because 
you needed to have an exposure to believe. And for Martha and for Mary, something must happen to their lives as well. That's why I delayed. I'm glad I was not there. Hallelujah. Is that something God wants to achieve in your life? Is that something God wants to achieve through your life? And God has elected that you can suffer a little longer so that many more might see the glory of God in that. It doesn't take Jesus anything just to say, Lazarus, stand up. And the sickness will have disappeared. And I also say it's nothing for Jesus to just say, send a word. Tell Mary and Martha that Lazarus is all right. Give him bread to eat and that will have been the end of it. Jesus has done that before. But in this case, rather than utter that word, he sat down again. Rather than rush there, he went back again. By the time he was coming, Brother Lazarus is in the grave four days. Mary said, and then Martha said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Mary also came, Mary said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then the sympathizers, they said, if this man so loved this man, why didn't he come on time? If he had been here, the case would not have been like this. Everybody concluded that Jesus was late. But for him, he was only walking within the day. He was only walking according to the will of God, according to the purpose of God, and according to the divine timing. Praise the Lord. Now tonight, what does this matter? What does he mean to our lives? What is Jesus wanting to achieve with this? Before I would tie them together, I want you to see several things that Jesus wanted to establish. He wanted to establish several issues in that story. Number one, he wanted to establish that God never comes late. Even if your situation became hopeless, when he comes, are you hearing me? When he comes, the hopeless situation will turn around because he has power to call into existence those things that be not as though they were. He wanted to establish that what matters in everything we do in life is not our convenience, is not our pleasure, but his glory. Anything that does not give God glory, even if he gives us pleasure, even if he relieves us, is not good enough. He wants to establish that even if a Lazarus will be sick and sick and sick and sick and sick and sick until he died, until he is buried, if it will give glory to God, let it be so. Will I have young people here today who say, Father, glorify yourself at my expense. Let it not be my pleasure first. Let it be your glory. Let it not be my convenience first. Lord, let it be your glory. Let it not be my easiness. Let it not be what looks quick for me. Let it be your glory. 
I want to live for your glory. I want to serve for your glory. And if possible, I want to die for your glory. You know why that will be important? Why would that be important, my brother? Not be a correct missionary unless you only live for his glory. If you are living for your pleasure, oh my brother, you can't go wherever God wants you to go. You will go to where it is simple. You go to where you can quickly get glory. Where you can quickly get some achievements. Unless you are really saying, oh God, not for my pleasure, not for my ease, not for my achievement, but for your glory, Lord. Even if I have to die for your glory to be established, let it be so. Are you hearing with me? Eh? The spirit of a missionary is not first of all the spirit of achievement. It's the spirit that is saying let your glory O oh God, be established. Let your glory, O oh Lord, be established. Let it be your glory, Lord. When I have come to know that God, in his determinate cancer, was locating my life in the bush in those days. When I would need to travel from Ibadan to that my location, I spent two days. I could not arrive on one day. And I would sleep by the riverside. The mosquito of Shintaku, those of you that come from Kogi State, Oh my God, if mosquito kills people, it will have killed me. Praise the Lord. Mosquito will eat me so much that they could no longer fly. They will just stay. So I will just be using my hand. They drink, pim, pim, blood, pim. When he has finished, I will use toilet roll to rub. And I'm driving the bush. And I'm saying, Lord, will my life come out with anything here? And then he will ask me, why do you want your life to come out with something? What if it is my choice to waste it? Have I not bought you with a price? Ah. I say, don't I have entitlement to expect to expect resort, he said, for who? Why do you need resort? Whether there is a resort or not, is it your own? I thought I bought you with a price. I will cry. I will weep on my road. I said, God, God, God. God said, yes. And don't intimidate me with your tears. I will get my glory in your life. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all the heavens. Let thy glory be above. All my heirs, let thy glory be above all my heirs. I will sing it to myself again and say, Lord, glorify yourself at my expense. Then I knew that 
That was the way of Jesus. The Bible said, even though there was nothing wrong with him, it pleased the father to bruise him. Jesus said, Satan has come, but he has found nothing in me, but for men to know that I love my father, let us go. Let us go and die. I'm looking for young men here. Not those who are looking for their self-glory and achievement. I'm looking for young men who are saying, for your glory, Lord. Send me anywhere, oh God, if it is your glory. Delay me as many times as you want, if it is for your glory. Take me anywhere. Let me do anything for you, if it is for your glory, Lord. If it is for your glory, Lord. Someday, I received one dangerous letter. Oh my God, that letter almost finished my life. Perhaps you will not have met me. What was it? I got a letter from Ibadan. And this brother wrote, Bragbile, what are you doing in, 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 in Benue State? Then I also said, what am I doing in Benue State? You know, <laughs> terrible question. What am I doing here? I looked, every, I've traveled everywhere. I have traveled to all the villages. All the villages of Tivland, all the villages of Idoma land, all the villages of Igala. Because that time, Igala is part of Benue. I'm going from one end to another. And in those days, it looks as if I'm just wasting away. And this brother said, what are you doing there? Something is already happening with us in Ibadan. You better come back. Then I took the letter and said, God, what am I doing here? And the Holy Spirit said, why are you asking me such a question? I bought you with a price. Whether you live or you die, you are my own. Whether anything happened through you or nothing happened through you, what's your business about that? Ah, I say, but God, eh, I need to show something that I'm also doing something. The Lord says, show what? You want to use my work for show? Be careful. I was still arguing with God. I said, there's nothing I'm there. I said, this Bible study. And you know, by that time, we started a Bible study. It met every Tuesday. And the people in the town, they are running there. Every five o'clock, they are running. It was see a study. It looked something. I said, except this Bible study that I'm doing. The Lord said, eh, you point your finger at my work. You will see. I will show you that I use you not for your pleasure. I use you for only my glory. And if you touch my glory, you are finished. I said, God, but, but, but what, what do you want me to do now? God said, okay, I will show you. So that day, it happened to be a Tuesday. I was preparing for the study. I was praying when this matter happened. And I said, today, oh, for you to know that it's not your work and you cannot touch it, nobody will come for your Bible study today. Nobody will listen to you. I thought it was a joke. I went for the Bible study. Usually people have come, they have swept the floor, they have arranged everything. Nobody came. I swept. I dusted the benches. I printed the study outline. Nobody came. 5.30, nobody came. Quarter to six, nobody came. It don't know me that I'm in trouble today. 
I said, Father, does he mean my own is finished? He said, I just want you to know that nobody can touch my work and survive. <laughs> when it's 10 minutes to 6, nobody has come. Then the Lord said, for you to know, 10 people will come for this meeting today. Out of the crowd that used to come before, only 10 will come. And when they come, I'm not using you to speak to them. And just like that, by 6 o'clock, 10 people have arrived as if they planned. They did not apologize. They did not say, sorry, we came late. No. <laughs> they didn't know the drama I was going through that night. When they all sat down, they were waiting for me to start the meeting. If I tried to start, the presence of God departed. When I sat and said, brother, please, can you lead us in worship? The presence of God came back. When the presence of God began to come again, I, I thought that it is time to take over. As I took over, the Lord departed again. I tried it four times. I had to tell the brother, I said, brethren, I have to tell you something to, today. They said what? I said, the Lord does not plan to use me today. Uh, let anybody that has something to say, please say it so that we can pray and go. They did. Again, it bothered me that they did not pray for me. I was surprised that they did not even say, Brother Billy, let's just pray for you. No. They left. They left me there. Oh, my trouble started. I said, God, so what has happened? He said, that's what has happened. He said, your past. You will have, your past will be your climax. And you will spend the rest of your years defending your past. Ah! I said, God, what is the past that I will be spending the rest of my years to defend? Oh, God, have mercy on me. I'm, I cried. I went back home. The Lord said, for you to know what I'm telling you, that Bible study will not hold again. Ah, my God. My God. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God will set you apart for his glory. And that you will live for his glory. There's great work God will do through us if you don't touch the glory. There's a mighty work waiting for several of you if you do not tamper with the glory of God. I'm going to end to pray with you on that note tonight. Do you know that the whole thing finished? I was still going. Nobody came. One day, I went. And I sat there. Nobody came. And one other church was meeting in another segment. God said, you better stand up. Go and join that church. Let them pray for you. <laughs> ah, when I got there, they said, end of the month, anointing. The man brought oil. You know, I would never have put myself for anybody to put oil on my head. The man said, anointing for end of the month. All of you come up. I was this God said, you better stand up. <laughs> go, and, go and line up there. I said, God, why are you dealing with me like this? He said, for you to know that no man can touch my work. Do you think finished? I went back to my house. Nobody came again, I'm telling you. And they did not explain to me why they are not coming. I will meet them. I will greet them. They will not say, oh, we couldn't come for Bible study yesterday. No. They didn't come again. So I went back to my room. I started my prayer again. Lord, have mercy on me. Then I resolved. I resolved. I told God. I told God, I will live for your glory. Whether anything happens or nothing, it will never be mine. My own is for you to be glorified at my expense. If it is your glory that I should remain small, that's okay. If it's your glory that I should just be ordinary, that's all right. Lord, let your will be done. 
I found Jesus living for nothing else. He did nothing for himself. He did nothing for his personal glory or pleasure. He did all for the Father to be glorified. If you are going to answer the call to mission that I'm going to show you tonight, you must be that one that said, Lord, even if it is to one soul, you are sending me, I will go. If that is your choice, Lord. If it is to one village that you want me to locate with all my intellect, if it is your glory, Lord, I will go. Lord, I will not go to where it is only my pleasure to go. I will not go to only the places where I think my ego, my achievement will be achieved. I want to live for your glory. Jesus did all things the glory. Even when he wanted to raise Lazarus, said, Father, I know you hear me always, but that these people may know that it is you at work in me. What a man our Lord Jesus was who lived only to glorify the Father. Who did all for the glory of God. So it became clear to me whether I live or die. Paul, you will not know. I traveled as far. I was going to a charmer. And I got stranded somewhere. And I'm standing there in between on my way up to Okpoga. And I'm standing there. The road was lonely. And that strange question came. Say, is this how you are going to waste away? But now I have overcome that. I said, if it pleases the Lord to waste me here, it's all right. Then I heard a voice saying, and you will not be wasted. Your life will not be wasted. I'm not a waster. Any life given to me for my glory, I don't waste it. I say, okay, Lord, even if you waste it, it's all right. After all, after all, if I paid and I bought a shoe, I paid. And I decided not to wear that shoe for two years. What is the problem? Baba, what is the problem? Nothing. Can the person I bought the shoe from come and say, the shoe I sold to you, I've been looking at your leg, you are not wearing it. What am I going to say to him? Eh? What's your business? What if I bought it only to, to keep it to be gathering dust? What's your business? I came to that point. I said, Lord, even if I die, let me die. If it is only for your glory. All those who became vessels in the hand of God, who took the work of God to the frontiers, they took a decision. If I perish, I perish. Something comes out of my life, fine. If nothing comes out of it, it's okay. Okay, Lord. When you come to that point, God, make sure that something comes out. But let me now tell you, not for you, but for himself. Not for me, but for himself. Hallelujah. So when I go here, I go there, and things are happening, and people say, Brad Bile is here, Uncle Bile is here. It's clear in my head. Not for me. Not about me. It's not for me. It's not for my pleasure. It's for him. I stop here tonight. 
Lazarus rose up. But not for him. It's for the glory. Do you know that when Lazarus stood up, he had already died. He had no hope of living again. So this life that God gave him is not for Lazarus. So people were looking for Lazarus in order to see Jesus. All the miracles that will come in your life, it shall be for his glory. All the breakthroughs that God will bring to your life, it must be for his glory. All the men that will gather around your life, it must be for his glory. It must not be for your personal glory. But if God has achieved his glory in your life, oh my God, you will step on carpets. God will lavish himself on you because he knows you are dead to personal pleasure. Dead to personal achievement. You are dead. You are only alive to see his glory. How many will you of you tonight who say, Father, take my life. Not what I can gain, but for your glory. Lord, take me anywhere you want. Not as it is convenient for me, but as it pleases you. As it achieves your glory. As it makes me the man you want me to be. Lord. 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 Be thou glorified, O oh God, at my expense. But let your glory, let your glory, let your glory come. Let men touch your glory as they touch my life. Would you like to join me to pray? Will you? Let me tell you something. Even if you don't, I will go and pray my prayer. I have seen that that's the way forward. I've seen that that's what God wants to do. But I want to assure you, there is no life so given to God that will be a waste. There's no life so released to God and to God's glory that will be a waste. You are the one thinking, if I throw my life now, will anything come out of it? Why not? And even if nothing comes out of it, and God is happy to be glorified, what does that mean? I will be here this night and I'll be standing, waiting for young men, young women that are saying, Lord, Lord, take my life for your glory. You sit for your glory. Glorify yourself at my expense. Even if it is not convenient, have your way with my life. This night is a very critical night. Men that will take the man of God that will take the name of Jesus everywhere. There are those that have died to themselves. They have died to pleasure. They are no longer looking for themselves. They are not looking for cheap popularity. They are saying, Lord, Lord, only for you, only for your glory, I lay my life. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Stand up and come and say, Lord, this life for your glory. This life only for your glory. I have lived for pleasure too long. I have stayed where it is convenient. Send me anywhere, Lord. Send me anywhere, Lord. Use me anyhow. Do whatever you want to do with my life. But let the glory be yours. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Please come on, come on. If the Spirit of God is moving you, come quickly. Our time is already up. But tonight is a night when God must take the glory. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, that sister. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Find a space. Please, thank you, thank you. Move that thing backward. Give space to the young men that must come. Those that must turn their lives to his hand. Those that must say, Lord, have your way. Have your way with no God. Do whatever you want to do with me. But let my life count for your glory. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you tonight. Men that will shake their nations. Men that will shake their generation. They are no more looking for their own personal choice. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Are you coming here? Do quick. Do quick. Do quick. Do quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Araba Sanda Yabakundo Roboshi. O Robo Samba Ramashiva. O Robo Samba Ramashiva. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you coming here? Do quick. The Spirit of God is urging you and say, What are you reserving your life for now? What pleasure do you want? What do you want? Do you know it's a privilege for God to take his glory? Lord, have your way with me. Thank you, dear brother. Dear sister, come down quickly. That young man get a place to knee down. Just get a place and say, Lord, I lay you down. That young lady, run, run and say, Lord, I lay you down. I lay you down. My brother, run. Say, Lord, I lay you down. I lay you down. I will live only for your glory. Friend, are you coming? Please move fast. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Biri masanda yama korobo shiri. Zembo robo shenda yama mama mama kaura mashiri. Tonight, Lord. Tonight, Lord, you are recruiting another generation. Another generation of men and women who are dead to self. We are no longer looking for small comfort. Thank you, my sister. Just find a space. Just find a space and get on your knees. Blessed be your name. Always my life. Always my life. As you are singing that song, you want to lie before the Lord and say today, only for you, Lord, only for you, Lord. Only for you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. I will ask our brother, please come, sir. You are the one to lead us to pray this prayer tonight. Let me ask our pastor, Pastor Enenche, to lead us in prayer. They took this kind of decision many years ago. They poured their lives out. It was looking a waste. It was looking as if nothing will come out of it. But this is what God has done. God bless you, sir. Go ahead. We're going to take that song three more times. I'll waste my life again and again on you. On you. There is profit in being wasted, Lord. On you. On you. What a good way to be wasted for you and on you. To be wasted, Lord, on you, Lord, on you. I'll waste my 
Lift your voice and listen to this. In the name of Jesus. Say, see that will save his life shall lose it. And he that will lose his life for the sake of the kingdom shall find it. In the name of Jesus. servant here tonight does not need any witness to confirm the seed of his life but I can tell you the, the indelible imprint that wasted life has left and continued to live in the sands of eternity I can't forget the solemn assembly meetings Throughout Benue State, Otuko Town, Jesus College, in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, the quarry site experience towards revival in Indoma land, message from hell, the death to self messages that has left indelible imprint is a product of this wastage. It may not be popular initially, but if it is proper, it is okay. Lord, I am not struggling for my own convenience. I am not struggling for what even is popular with people. What you want is what I want. What you want for my life is what I want. Take me, take this life and use it for waste it for whatever you want. One more time, here am I, Lord. Take this life, waste me for whatever you want to use me for. Waste my life, waste my life. Waste it for your glory. I am available. I am available. I am available. I am here, Lord. Father, I am available. Take this life, waste it to your glory. Whatever you want to do with it, do with it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Finally, when at the junction of our call, myself and my wife, we had already opened doors to the United Kingdom, opened doors for practice, opened doors for further study. At that junction, the call came. When we mentioned it to the person, to people, and especially the person who pastored us at that time, he said, even if you have a call, is it not better to do it in, in Europe, in, in the United Kingdom, than to do it in Nigeria? Go there. You can't say, you've, you've finished studying medicine, your wife finished studying medicine, and then you want to leave all these things and say, you are, you are called to Nigeria. If we follow that counsel, we won't be here today. You are going to lift up your voice. Father, block.
block my ears from any other voice any other counsel any other thing any other voice any other counsel any other emotion any other direction that is contrary to your direction for my life Block my ears. Father, deliver me from every counsel that is contrary to your will for me. Every advice, every advice that is contrary to your plan for me. Every advice, every advice, every counsel, every wisdom that is contrary to your will for my life. I am only interested in what is your will. I am interested in only your plan. I am interested in only your purpose. I am interested in only your will, in only your purpose. Every counsel, every wisdom, every advice, voice that is contrary to your voice every counsel every wisdom that is contrary to your wisdom that is contrary to your voice for my life father deliver me from them click father help me to hear you and you alone not finished father help me not to miss my day let me not miss my day oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know the day of your visitation father help me not to miss my day help me not to miss my day and help me to finish my work within my day would you lift your voice and speak to god help me not to miss my day help me not to miss my day
in the name of Jesus father you have bought us with a price we have no power over our lives but before you tonight every life on this altar Lord to your glory and waste, waste us to your will in your will in your glory Father forget our sentiments forget our emotions and do what is best in your plan lives be useful in the economy of heaven master let this night be memorable in the life of everyone here when the role is called it will be clear that we made the right decisions tonight waste us again and again and again whatever is standing in the way of anyone and this decision tonight father we ask that you collapse it in the name of Jesus let maximum glory come out of every life here tonight maximum glory Lord In the name that is above every name, the grace to follow through, the grace to go through, the grace to go through, the grace to fulfill your purpose by this decision to bring fruit in time and eternity. Father, let that grace be released. Thank you, Master, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you. 